what is necessary to be among the attributes of prophets and what are impossible to be of their attributes. It is obligatory upon every accountable person to believe that every prophet of Allah must be attributed with truthfulness, trustworthiness, intelligence, virtuous character, courage, and articulation. Consequently, lying, dishonesty, vileness, fornication, other enormous sins, and blasphemy are impossible to be amongst their attributes, both before and after prophethood. So before the prophet receives the revelation, he is protected from that. After receiving the revelation, he is also protected from all what we have mentioned. Because these sins and ill characters do not befit the office of prophethood. Lying. If one were to be a liar, and people know about him that he lies constantly, then one day he will tell them, I'm the messenger of Allah, they won't believe him. So a prophet cannot be a liar. Dishonesty, there is no prophet who betrays. Thus, it's not true that Prophet Dawood betrayed the leader of his army some people falsely claim that Prophet Dawood was married to 99 ladies and that he liked the wife of the leader of his army. So he started sending him to the battles where he believes he would be killed in them until he was killed in one of the battles so he took his wife. This does not befit the prophets. This is called betraying. So Prophet Dawood and all the prophets do not betray. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam never lied. So prophets do not lie. Many people these days would lie when they are joking. But prophets do not lie in any way. Whether they are talking seriously or sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may say a statement as a joke to make the hearts of the companions around him be soothed but he always says the truth he said once peace be upon him I may say a joke, but I always say the truth. So because lying, even when one is joking, is not permissible. Prophets are protected from lying before and after prophethood. Also, the prophets have the best characters as well. Allah chose them to be the best of the creations. So they have the best characters, the best manners and ethics. People learn from them. They are role model for others. That's why they have the best manners. There is no prophet who is vile or abject. Rather, the prophets, peace be upon them, are all respected by people and even those non-believers from the Quraysh tribe before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the revelation they used to respect him and they used to say about him the trustworthy the truthful they used to call him the truthful and the trustworthy. 
before he receives the revelation. And they used to look at him with a high regard. But when he received the revelation and he told them that he is the messenger of Allah sent to them, many started taking him as an enemy and opposing him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they are opposing the truth. But as a character, they knew he was well respected. He was truthful. He was trustworthy. Even before he received the revelation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fornication and the introductions of fornication also do not befit the prophets. There is no prophet who committed fornication or what is classified as introduction for it. Not even the intent to commit fornication. Prophets are protected from this as well. Hence, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam never, never intended to fornicate with the wife of Al-Aziz in Egypt at that time. And the Quran mentions clearly the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and that lady. It clearly states that the lady closed the doors and chased him when he found that the only way to escape is to run towards the door. She grabbed him from his clothes from the back and ripped them. And she saw her husband at the door. She tried to defend herself in a way and throw the blame on Yusuf alayhi salam by saying, what's the punishment of the one who intends to inflict harm on your family? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam made a baby in the cot talk and the baby in the cot talked and said look at his clothes if they are ripped from the back then he is truthful and she is lying and if his clothes are ripped from the front then she is truthful it was so obvious that his clothes were ripped from the back and that means he was running away from her not towards her then her husband said to her and Yusuf alayhi salam, Yusuf, a'rid an haza. Meaning don't talk about it because it's a scandal for him, for his wife. In his position that his wife did such and such, that's a big scandal for her. He said, Yusuf, a'rid an haza. Don't mention it. Then he looked at her and said, wastawfiri li zambiki. Ask for forgiveness for what you have done. Innaki kunti min al You were amongst the wrongdoers. So he did not address Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam with these words because he knew that Prophet Yusuf was innocent and he did not intend to commit fornication with that lady. Unfortunately, some people when they tell stories about prophets, they fabricate stories that do not befit the prophets and consequently they will lose their proper belief in the prophets and losing the proper belief in the prophets will render them non-believers because if one says i believe in prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam but i believe he is a liar wal billah this person doesn't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If one says, I believe in the prophets that they are sent by Allah to people, but I believe that they betray, they commit enormous sins and the like, he doesn't have that correct belief in the prophets. That will render him an unbeliever because he doesn't have the correct belief in the prophets. So there is no prophet who committed fornication or intended to commit fornication in contrary to what is mentioned in some books 
when they interpret the ayah, the verse, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّ بِهَا لَوْلَا أَرَّآ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ They misinterpret the verse. They say she intended to fornicate with him and he intended to fornicate with her. But he saw the burhan from Allah Azza wa Jal. That's not the meaning of the verse. The meaning of the verse, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ She rushed towards him with the intention of committing fornication. وَهَمَّ بِهَا He was about to push her. And that's a very expected and common reaction from any person who wants to keep the other person away from him. Someone is approaching you face to face. He's approaching you and you don't want him. The first thing that would come to your mind is what? To push him away. You don't want him. But at that moment, Yusuf alayhi salam was given the burhan. He was inspired by Allah azza wa jal that if you were to push her like this, her clothes might be ripped from the front and she might take this against you. Instead, turn your back to her and rush towards the door. And this is what he did. He turned around, gave her his back and rushed towards the door. She grabbed him and she ripped his clothes from the back and that was an evidence for his innocence. As you can see, her husband knew from this that Yusuf alayhi salam never thought of even committing fornication with her. But unfortunately, as we mentioned, in some books, they misinterpret this verse and they claim that Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam also intended to commit fornication with her walayyazu billah. Allah Ta'ala said about the prophets, وَكُلَّنْ فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave the prophets preference above all the world. They are the best of the creations. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah did not send a prophet but with a pleasing face and a pleasing voice. Then he said, peace be upon him, and your prophet, meaning himself, ﷺ, has the most handsome face and the most beautiful voice, ﷺ. And that shows that all the prophets were articulate, meaning when they talk, they talk with clear words. So Prophet Musa alayhi salam was articulate, meaning when he talks, he talks clearly, without changing a letter to another. As some people may have a lisp, or they might change a letter and pronounce it differently. This does not happen to the prophets. They speak clearly. And Prophet Musa السلام, used to speak clearly as well. Without having any problem pronouncing the letters. As for the verse mentioned in the Quran that he said, رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقُدَةً مِّنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي The scholar said when he was a baby and he was sitting in the lap of the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh of Egypt raised him. He pulled his beard. And Pharaoh was afraid because the fortune tellers told him a male will be born in that year and he will destroy your kingdom. But subhanAllah, you know the story when the mother of Musa alayhi salam put him in like a cot that floats on the surface of the water and left him in the Nile River. 
But who grabbed the coat? The soldiers of the Pharaoh. They took him into the palace of Pharaoh. And they said to him, look what we found. He wanted to kill him first. Then his wife, Asia, was a believer. Said, why don't we raise him? And he is in your palace. You can see if you are worried. If you see anything worrying you, you can kill him. So when he was a little baby sitting in the lap of the Pharaoh, he pulled his beard down. The Pharaoh got shocked and scared. He said, that's the one. Meaning who's going to destroy my kingdom. Then she said to him, he's a little boy. He's a child. He's a baby. He doesn't even differentiate between dates and charcoal, fire charcoal. So it was mentioned that Musa at that age took that charcoal and put it on his tongue. It burnt him. And that made the Pharaoh relaxed. So he stopped the notion of killing him. So when it burnt him, it caused a kind of little knot that did not affect his articulation when pronouncing the letters. When he used to talk, he used to talk clearly without changing any letter. But that little knot bothered him along the time. So he made that dua, so this knot will be removed and he will be able to talk more comfortably. That's all what happened. It doesn't mean that this not affected the way he talks. Like some people would have a list. They cannot pronounce the letter seen, for instance. They pronounce it as th. He didn't have that problem. Also, he didn't have an issue pronouncing any letter. He used to talk clearly. But he wanted for that little knot to be removed so he can talk comfortably. And that what happened.